Hey guys, this is Genesis here. I got some time to go ahead and do a little ARMA tutorial. This is something I am working on for degeneration. But, uh, but I thought that some map makers or mod makers or whoever would might like to have a nice tutorial on how to get 3D floating text in the world that brought you as broadcast properly to all clients and it allows you to change the messages and things. This is kind of a way for me, and DJ, what I'm using it for is a way for me to get AI or things to talk without having to have voice actors or something. So, and there's a couple posts of this about this in the Bohemia forums, um, but I never really saw like a good straight up tutorial. So this is going to go ahead and try to fill that gap. So you, what you want to do is, I'm just going off the assumption you're making a mission. If you're making a mod, it'll be roughly the same way. Uh, if you're making a mod, you should know enough to how to adapt it well enough. So I went ahead and, and made a mission here. Let's call it 3D text. And in the mission, I have the player and I have an AI here that I want to be talking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name him Bob. Bob's a good name. So I just have a name for him. Okay. So the first step you're going to want to do is, go, is open up the mission here in the in your documents MP missions folder. And you should make yourself an init.sqf if you haven't already. Okay, so I made mine already to kind of save some time. And this is where you're going to kind of compile everything, kind of get everything running, but we'll come back to that. So the first thing we want to do is create a function. And we'll, I'm just going to call it, um, so we'll do function loading, or we'll do function 3D text, SQF. Okay. I'm going to open that. And that's going to go ahead and give us our lovely, lovely script of creating some floating text. So there's a couple parts to this. So we're just going to start with just the text itself. So I'm going to go ahead and predict ahead of time some variables I'll be using. So I know I want to pass a message. Uh, I'm going to want to pass a unit, the unit that will be I'm making the statement the, using the message. And I'm thinking it'd be nice to define how long of a wait, uh, how long to display the message. And then the display of the 3D text. The display I'll, I'll explain later. So essentially, we I'm, I'm thinking ahead of time, we're going to have a message that I'm going to pass through as, with the script. Uh, it's going to have a unit attached to it in a wait time. And then the display. So the display is just the text above the unit, essentially. And this private, you just want to use this in all states. You know, I don't know everything about it, but what I do know is you pretty much just want to use this in almost every script for local variables. It's just as another way to make sure the variables aren't getting crisscrossed and you get activated. Okay, so like I said, I'm predicting some stuff. So I'm assuming that this script is going to receive a command, a function. It's going to this function is going to be looking for, for the three things. The function needs to get past a unit, a message, and how long to wait. So we're going to go ahead and use those same variables up there. We'll, we'll assume the unit will be zero. We'll assume the message will be this. And we'll assume the right time will be this. OK. And so with that, we can kind of predict well, hmm. So when we call the script, it'll probably, you know, and I like to put like an example usually at the top of like how these work. So, example. Okay. This has to be example. So, Bob. So, if we're using this one as the example here, Bob would be the unit. The string right here, guard, please stand back. So, you know, the guard is saying, please stand back would be this select one, the message, and then 15 would be the wait time. So 15 seconds for the message to be displayed. And then this remote execute script, this remote execute 3D text, we'll get to that part in a little bit. That just ensures that it shows up for everybody. Okay. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just do this now to kind of explain it. And I'll explain why I'm really using it a little bit later. But I'll tell you what it's doing right now. 
Okay, so this object net ID, unit call biz funk net ID. What this does is it pulls a variable. Oh, that's another one we should probably add to our list up here. Almost every variable you use, you're going to want to add. So what this object net ID is, is it pulls just the straight up number that it, the net ID that is associated with the unit passed. Um, and I'll tell you why that's important later, because the way you have to pass variables to an emission event handler is kind of seems to be a pain. I don't know if there's a better way. Someone needs to let me know if you know more than I do. Um, but this is the best way and the most efficient way I could find to do it. Okay. So, so now we have all the variables. So now the function knows how to deal with the variables we pass it, and it also pulls the object net ID from the unit. Now we're going to go ahead and put this in comments so you can, when you download it you can see this. Okay, so pull the net ID from the object. This will determine... Oh, this will help the event handler determine where to display the text. Okay, I'll get more on that later. Okay. I'm going to actually close this back up. Uh, I'll do that so people really know. Okay, so we have to do to display the text. It's a little something like this. Well, I'm going to explain this line by line. What I'm doing here. Okay, so I did call compile format display. So underscore display is going to go ahead and put a variable, a, a handler on the added mission event handler. And this can be any name you want it to be. I'm just naming it this so I know how to remove it later. It makes it easier to remove. And the call compile format is because add mission event handlers can't just take these variables outside of it. So I need to find a way to pass to this emission event handler these units. Because they're not going to be global variables. I don't want to make them global variables because that's just going to eat too much bandwidth up. I don't want to do that if I can help it. So I'm going to take the hit on this end for frame rate, right? you know, script lag, uh, instead, of, you know, instead of network lag as much. So this, this is why this is here. It's, it's a way to pass, it's to force these variables into this add emission event handler because by default it will not allow it allow them through okay. and you'll see that more clearly as it goes okay so the way this add mission event handler works is that you tell it what kind of event it is and it's going to be a draw 3d event and we're going to go ahead and jump down a line here go out some we continue this so what i want to do is get the location that i want the text to be displayed Okay. Okay, and the next line here is that's the location. So object from net ID. So that remember that up here we got the object net ID from the unit. Now within this, so the way to see this is just imagine this is entirely a new script essentially. Right here it starts this new script. And so it doesn't have access to these variables up here. Those, it, it can't just put unit model to world down here. It will not work. I need to put object from net ID and then percent one because you'll see why in a moment I'm, co I'm calling compile format this. And I should probably spell model to world correctly. Okay. And the next thing I'm going to do, and this is just something you can completely change uh, yourself. There's actually more of it, you know, as I'm writing this again, I could see a better way to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and stick to what I had before. Um, and then, you know, you can find more efficient ways to make this run too. Okay, so I'm setting up an if-then statement here. And I have if the player is less than 10 meters, then I want it to display the message here. So that's that's my thinking. That's, that's why I'm going ahead. So I want to pull the location. So how, where is the location of the the unit here or the object?
object, and then what's the distance from the object and the player? Now player, you noticed, I can just type in player right in the add emission event handler, because the player is already a global variable. The player is always where the script is local to where the script is being executed, the function is being executed. So player, I can safely put in here, and it will be per individual basis player. Okay, and then this will pull the object in question. And we're just checking to see, is, is a player less than 10 meters away? Then if the player is less than 10 meters away, then we want to go ahead and do this. We're going to draw icon 3D, and then we're going to leave this, the two here, or just like the texture. We're going to leave that blank. And then these ones right here are the color, and then the transparency. And then the next area is going to be, whoop, is going to be the location of the text. Okay. So we're just going to pull from the location above. So this is the, so we're essentially pulling for X, Y, Z here. And for the Z, for the height, I want to make sure that it's actually a little bit higher. So I, I, get, I pulled the location, select 2, so that I pull the height, or, the, or I think it's Z in Arma, so the Z essentially, and then I add, or the height, and I just add 2 meters to it to make sure that it's somewhere roughly above the object. Okay, I'm going to close that off. And then these are just a bunch of random variables that I don't remember at the top of my head. And then this right here where the percent 2 is, you're going to see this is where the message goes. Okay, so the percent one is the unit from up here. And the percent two is going to be the message. Okay, and you'll see how that ties in later. And we'll put a two, because two, this can be a zero, which is just a it'll display. So this number here dictates how this message gets displayed. Okay, a zero means it'll just display the text in whatever color. A one means it'll give a shadow, and a two means it'll outline it. I like it outlined. I think that makes it look much better, but you can change this. And this is the size of the text. So I'm going to do 0.04 .04 size. And it can go pretty big, actually. I think it goes all the way to oh, 1 is massive, so 0.04. .04. And if you want to see what all these little things do, just go ahead and look up Draw, I draw Icon 3D on the wiki, and you'll find it. And you can change it to your heart's content. I'm not going to go through all that here. It's just a waste of time, I think. So with that, we want to make sure we come back and close this command here. So now we want to close the draw 3D. You can see when I highlight this, I highlight it up here. Now I can see that it is being closed. Bring it back a little bit. And then now I need to make sure I close the call compile format. And this is where and it's a little little confusing. So now I'm going to make sure I close the call compile format and close the quotes from here there to here. Go here to here. I know it's very confusing. And then we're going to go ahead and type in unit, comma, and then uh, actually, sorry. It's going to be object net ID, comma, then the message. Okay, so let me explain this a little bit more because that was quite a trip. So let's recap. So from the beginning, this is the function runs and it pulls the unit, the object, and then it pulls the object net, net ID from that unit. And then it pulls the message that was supplied to it and then the amount of time it wants to display the message. Okay, and from there, we do a call compile format add mission event handler. Now the add mission event handler is like starting, it's like using a spawn command. Any of the variables before are not there anymore. You can't just simply reference unit in here because it will not understand what unit is. It'll be an undefined variable. So what we have to do is find an interesting way to pass these variables to here without having to use a global variable because global variables when being used a lot is bad. Uh, that would just, using public variable constantly would just destroy the bandwidth. I don't want to do that for someone who's talking. So what I did instead is do call compile format. So the way these usually look 
So the way the script would usually work, say you're using a global variable, all you would need to really do is take this script here, put it here, and there's your event handler right there. Bam. And you can just change object from an ID to a global variable and work. So what we do is wrap around that. Let's wrap around this here. We wrap around the call compile format. And the call compile format is this here. And it adds, you put it all in quotes. The entire command you can see is in quotes. The reason that is is because call compile format allows us to add in these on the end here, as you can see. You can see if I highlight this, it, you can see the call compile format encompasses the entire thing. This is like a way, and there's better ways to describe this, um, but this is just a way to force these this information up here into the script. Okay. So what this does is, see this one right here? This is percent one. So this percent one is essentially a placeholder. It says, okay, I'm going to look here, and we'll go look in position 1, and there better be something there. Uh, whatever is there is going to be filled in here. So this percent 1 is really this object net ID. And this percent 2 is, was over in position 2. So the script comes here and goes, okay, so I need to look here. Okay, I know it's kind of confusing. It's, it'll be a lot better when you can see, if you download it and you can see it for yourself, well, what that looks like. Okay. A little, little confusing. Um, I know I'm not doing the best job of explaining it, but just download it, look at it yourself. It'll, it makes more sense and you just kind of look at it. So this will, this will display the text. Now what we want to do is have the text be displayed for an X amount of time and then have it disappear. So I'm doing sleep wait time. So this is pulling this, this select two from up here. Now this is okay to just simply do sleep wait time because this is no longer part of the admission event handler. Like this is all its own little thing right here. And to make, emphasize that, I'm gonna add that there. That's its own little thing. And now we can go to sleep wait time. And then we wanna remove the text or delete the admission event handler. The way you do that is simply by calling remove mission event handler draw 3D display. Okay, so remove it mission event handler is simply just the command that removes well a mission event handler. Okay, and then and we're removing with the till at what we want to remove, which is draw 3D. We want to remove the draw 3D category and then the display here you can see how these match here that's why I gave it a handler the underscore display equals so this entire thing right here is handler is display and now I can reference that later in the script to remove it okay, okay. so the next part we want to do and that's that's the function done so we have the script written it's in here it's it's in there, but now we don't have a way to really call it in game. So what we're going to do is go over to the init.sqf. I want to compile that function so it runs faster, it loads faster. So the way that I'm going to do that, <coughs> excuse me, is by doing a compile preprocess here, and the way that's going to look is like this. So we're gonna, I'm just going to. There's a lot of stuff you can change the names of these. Okay. We want to compile the function so it can be called or respond. Makes it run faster. Okay. More efficient. So I'm going to go ahead and just label it function 3D text equals compile preprocess file numbers. I use preprocess pre file numbers because it tells you, like, if there's an error in the function, it'll tell you where, what line number it is, which helps a lot. There is compile preprocess file, which doesn't. I don't know if it's quicker or not, um, but especially if you're learning how to code or whatever, I would use preprocess file numbers. Essentially, this just means it compiles it up, it packages it up, it keeps it in memory, loads it into memory to hold on to it so it doesn't have to recompile it every time. Okay, and now we're just going to tell it which script to do. Um, 
just like that. Function 3D text to SQF. Now, if you have like a folder, so say you put this in a folder, it just would simply be, if you don't know, it just would be functions, you know, slash um, function 3D text, something like that. So that would tell you folder and then text name. Okay. So now on the init test scope, which automatically gets activated, I mentioned start, we'll go ahead and compile this for us. And now we have the function ready to go. Okay, so and I'm going to add one more thing in there. Now, we need a way to actually, so now it's compiled, but we still don't have a way to call it. How do we call it in game? How do we get the text floating above somebody? Well, I like using compile finals. Okay, and I'll show you what this does. So in the init.sqf, you want to do a compile final again. And these allow us to easily call the function later. Okay, and I'm just going to copy and paste this in here because these always trip me up. So you need to give the compile final a global name, just like you did with the function up here. Make sure these are global. So I'm just going to call it 3D text. You can call it whatever you'd like. And then compile final. And compile final, what that means is you don't need to do compile final. I prefer it. It means that it can, once you compile it in that mission, you cannot overwrite 3D text. It cannot be overwritten to anything else. So it's kind of why I just make sure it's nice and secure and locked in. And then in quotes here, you do the command you want. So, I wrote in this select 0, this select 1, this select 2, and in an array, call, and then we actually need to change this, so this is from dgen, to function 3D text. So it'll take, we can put in three variables here, and then call our function. And, and why am I doing this select 0, this select 1, this select 2? Well, because this one calls for the three variables, the select zero, the select one, the select two. Okay. So that's why. And this will allow us to call it. Okay. Now, that gives us an easy way to call it. Like, it can put it in a nice function. It seems a little bit roundabout why. Well, some people, a lot of people go, why don't you just take this right here and call, use that when you call it? Why do you have to compile a final one? Well, because one of the easiest ways I've found to execute it globally for all players across is this. And we're going to go ahead and hop into Armin now. Okay. So what I will do though for when I upload this is I'm going to go ahead and... Well you see this example over here actually? I forgot I put it in here already. This example right here. This remote execute 3D text. Oh, see there's 3D text right there. So remote execute needs a script or command to run, um, and that just makes it easier. I can tell it to execute 3D text, and I provide it the variables here, and it will pass it along for me for it to you know globalize it and do all that for me. I don't need to do any public variable work; it will do it for me. It uses the inbuilt the whatever is in the Armor 3 engine. It uses that much more efficient, much more quickly than I could do. So. Let's see if we can get Bob to talk. So I'm going to go ahead and just open, go to the mission. I'm going to go use the trigger here. And I'm going to paste that on the on action field. And I'm just going to have it be a radio. Okay, I can repeatedly trigger it. Sure. Um, it's going to be radio alpha. And I'm going to... So here's Bob. Make sure Bob's name is Bob. Yep. I want Bob to say... Let's change this. Let's so I'll type in Bob. Wow, it works. Let's hope it works. And then I'll have it stay for 15 seconds. Remote execute 3D text, comma zero. Now, this is something you're going to want to look up. Comma zero means it's going to execute this everywhere on every machine, including the server. Now, I kept it that way because the server sometimes could be a local server. So the player also needs to say it, uh, see the text. I don't want to do just everyone but the dedicated or server. So. If you got any questions about remote execute, I would look it up. Uh, I would definitely look look that one up. It's one you can just. It's it's a nice thing to know how to use. Okay. Anyway, back to this. So we have Bob saying, "Wow, Bob, wow, it works." Okay. okay. 
I'm going to press OK. I'm going to go ahead and export the multiplayer missions. I'm sure there's a better way to do this too, but it's the way I have always done it. I still haven't even really used the uh, 3D editor hardly at all. Okay, here's my mission. I'm going to press play. We're going to load it up. Oh, you can see I actually got an error here. So that's one nice thing. I did something wrong. And if you look, so it says I'm missing a, I must have, did I write something wrong here? Ah, yes, this is my bad. This is pre-processed file numbers. This seems to be pre-processed file line numbers. That'll be, Good to go in the in the uploaded version and under in the comments or in the section below. So it'll be it'll be good for you guys. Yep. See I still make a lot of mistakes like that, and that's okay. So what I'm gonna do is go and just cancel. I'm just gonna back out. It's also why it's very important to turn on the the what's that debug code. Especially when you're making and editing a lot of things. It's super important. Okay, just export it again. And we're going to go ahead and back out. And we're going to hope for no errors. No matter, you know, for me, no matter how many times I've done it, I've always made mistakes. So, okay. So let's hope it works this time. So you can see, we have Alpha here. Ah, there it is. Wow, it works. And now... In any script you use, let me uh, take this here. Now, in any script you use, it's really easy. Now you got the lot set up. At any point, you can do it with anybody. So I can even do let's put player in here for me. And this is just RTSE. I love this thing. It lets me do script on the fly. Let's have player say, uh, and we'll go. Wow. I am a player. Okay. There it is. Wow, I am a player. Yep. Um, let's see, can I run it multiple times? What if I have two? One for the player, one for Bob, and I have uh, Bob say, Wow, you are a player. There it is. And if I walk too far, disappears, come back in. Yep, and you can change that distance. We load that script back up. Oh, here we are. You can see the distance is 10 or 9 meters actually. If you're nine with the 9 meters of display, you can change it to more or less. I'll just be aware you can see that text through walls. So Yep, and that's a quick tutorial on how to do text. So I'm going to go ahead and say... Thank you for watching. And the zipped up package for this will be in the description. It is much easier to understand or to follow along. Wow, it's, it's all there and pieced together. Okay, so thank you so much.